Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Hi everyone, um, looks like lots of you are connecting from different parts of the world today. Uh, my name is Nell and I am uh, presenting today from Formlabs European headquarters in Berlin. Uh, my role at Formlabs is MIA Growth Program Manager. Um, prior to this, I was uh, driving the UK marketing uh, and I've been with the company coming up to four years now. Uh, so one of the great parts of my role is I get to uh, work on a lot of really interesting use cases for our 3D printers. And injection molding is something that we've seen a lot more interest in in the past uh, few years. And we've really rolled out our solution um, enhancing our capabilities on the material side uh, to give you a, a full workflow um, that can answer your in-house requirements. So join with me today is Juliette Com. Um, she is an applications engineer at Formlabs. Uh, she's been here a little bit more time than me in Berlin, so coming up to five years now. And she brings a wealth of engineering expertise. Um, as you can see here, she has an engineering degree and then also an, a master's in uh, mechanical engineering. Um, so Juliette will be talking through our injection molding solution, um, but it's also really interesting because she has been working with customers globally on um, their best practices and workflows, and she'll share them in more detail later. So um, Formlabs was founded in 2011 um, in Boston, and it was an MIT um, founders who decided to create a business to make um, SLA 3D printing more accessible, right? So it was very expensive prior to this, and they really wanted to kind of democratize 3D printing um, so that anyone could really create what they wanted to with this technology. So as you'll see the product lineup on the left here for Estelle, and um, this includes uh, dental solutions, medical solutions, and then of course, post-processing units. Um, and then uh, they didn't want to stop at that. Um, they looked at SLS, so selective laser sintering um, printing, nylon 3D printing at Form Labs. And um, they wanted to do the same thing with this um, and make it a lot easier to use, bring down the price point of um, adopting this technology. So obviously that's very important if you want to increase adoption. And also just making sure that we have the best kind of service out there um, because it is a daunting prospect for many companies kind of changing from traditional techniques. Welcome everyone to this um, discussion around 3D printing mold for injection molding. So I've been talking about injection molding uh, with 3D print talk for a while already. Uh, we've made a lot of content last year, like some white papers, some user story, and also some other webinars. So if you've already attended a webinar last year, this might be a little repetitive, but we had a lot of requests to do it again and had more time for Q&A as well and to have also a refresh on the content. So here we go and we have, um, we're gonna have a long Q&A session at the end. So I hope it's gonna be very interesting for you. So first, I want to start with setting some context. Uh, I see that there are a lot of beginner in uh, injection molding and also a lot of intermediate one. So just a little um, brief overview of what is injection molding. So this is a leading industrial process for manufacturing plastic parts. Uh, it is an extremely repeatable technology that yields to high quality parts and therefore it is widely used for mass producing um, part with uh, tight tolerance. It's also very fast with very short cycle, about 15 to 60 seconds for each cycle. Uh, so it is very cost effective for large volume of uh, large volume manufacturing. You typically it's about a thousand to a hundred of thousands of units that are being produced. Um, cost per part of very, is very low, it's about one to five dollars and um, it's like typical thermoplastic that are being produced, polypropylene, polyethylene, ABS and so on. So how does it work? It's a high temperature and high pressure that melts plastic pellets uh, into a rigid mold and then the plastic cools, solidifies into a final part. Uh, typically, if, if you're using injection molding, you're probably um, producing your mold out of metal, machining, um, and you're probably outsourcing them then, as we've seen. And uh, tooling production is usually between 2,000 to about 100,000 of dollars or, or euros, um, depending on the complexity of the mold, uh, the, the part geometry, and so on. And it takes about four to eight weeks of lead time if you outsource it. So, 
there's very long delays and uh, very expensive tooling. So usually you get a return on investment on your tooling when you produce large volume, large quantity of unit. So this is actually mass manufacturing, right? Uh, but what if you need to produce limited quantities of unit? So this is really the topic of today. Um, low volume production can be challenging. So if we look at the typical step for product development here on the x-axis of this graph versus the technology available or the technology that are commonly used on the y-axis. So it starts with concept and prototype on the left uh, of this graph, where designers usually use direct 3D printing for prototyping. And then uh, it goes um, to mass production on the right of this graph with tradi traditional injection molding. Um, being cost effective only for mass production as we just see, seen before. Uh, so how do we do when we sit in the middle, right? Um, in, the, in the product development lifetime, there is time when you need to produce series of prototype or pilot runs and also a limited series of unused parts. So both technology are not really cost effective today for uh, this kind of demand. So 3D printed mold can actually bridge this gap between prototyping and production. So it's, it's one way to do it. It's what we call rapid tooling. Um, so that way, product designers uh, can produce tools rapidly. <laughs> this is said in the name. Um, and then so 3D printing allows to produce rapidly mold either for functional prototypes, so if you need to test the material before going to mass production, or if you need to test your design before going to mass production, um, and affordable pilot run as well, if you need to produce uh, quite a lot of prototype, so um, large quantity of the same prototypes to send in the field for environmental testing and so on, or if you need to do on-demand production for a limited series of unused parts. So, Nell already introduced Formlabs for those who don't know the company. Um, we are manufacturing desktop 3D printer. And desktop 3D printing is really a powerful solution to fabricate tools rapidly uh, and at low cost because it is easy to implement and to operate and to maintain. Um, so it requires very limited equipment and it saves CNC time um, that um, if you're using CNC today, you know that it's uh, uh, very painful. You need to program the CAM, you need to have skilled operator that are um, maintaining, operating the machine. So you can actually save this labor for higher value task in the meantime and use your desktop 3D printed, um, 3D printing to um, equipment to do rapid tooling. So this is really powerful to, to do rapid tooling and iterate quickly and accelerate your product development, basically. So we are, uh, most of our users are using SLA for 3D printing. This is a picture of our Form 3 and Form 3L. Um, SLA is actually a great choice for, steroid, for uh, injection molding. It stands for stereotography, which is uh, one of the 3D printing technology. And it is characterized by a smooth surface finish and high precision that will transfer to the, to the final part. So the mold obviously will transfer all the detail to the final part. So if it's very accurate and very high detail, the final part will be as well. Um, and it also facilitates the demolding. Uh, also SLA parts are chemically bonded, which gives, um, so isotropy, it is fully dense part and it helps to produce functional mold. And at Formlabs, we develop high performance material that can withstand high temperature, high pressure that uh, will be, um, will be um, in the process of injection molding. So this is why this is really what we recommend for, for injection molding with 3D printing. So obviously, um, there are some, some consideration to take when you're using 3D printing mold um, instead of metal mold, because um, as you can imagine, plastic 3D printed tool is much more fragile than a um, metal tool. Uh, it has to, we have to try to reduce the impact of the pressure, of the temperature, uh, of the demolding, and just of the, some, some material as well can be very abrasive on, on plastic 3D printing. So this is what we gathered from different 
research and customer feedback, um, different type of recommendation on the design and on the process itself. So we have a lot of different um, resources that can help you do the process. Uh, we have actually uh, even a web page on our, on our website for uh, dedicated to injection molding. Um, Nell is going to post all these resources on, on the chat. We have an, an injection molding white paper with design guidelines and method and case study from different users as well. This is more like a comprehensive uh, piece of content, but we also have a short quick start guide, just a few pages that can really like help you on the go. And we also have some different user story and an FAQ blog post and so on. So we're just going to post all those resources that can help you in different situations. So first step is to design the mold. Um, at Farm Labs, we are expert in additive manufacturing, but we are not expert in mold design. But we've been working with expert in injection molding, and they've, they gave a lot of um, different recommendations on how to minimize the impact of the pressure in the cavity. That's really like the one of the um, best way to increase the longevity of the mold. So in the white paper, you can find a lot of recommendation on, for example, increasing draft angle two to five degrees, for example, is really the best. Uh, increasing the gate, having a large gate, this helps reducing the pressure. Also having large vent to have a better flow of the material. Uh, avoiding thin cross section, avoiding small feature, as I mentioned, uh, 3D printed plastic tool can be much more brittle and in particular for um, thin features. Um, and also, as you saw in the video right before, planning some stock allowance to help um, meeting uh, both half of the mold together just to be able to um, uh, post treat the mold rapidly after and being able to have a perfect fit and avoid flashing. So those are some helpful recommendations that will optimize your design. Besides that, there are not much more difference between how you design a mold for uh, metal uh, tooling compared to 3D printing tooling. You can incorporate um, ejector pin, you can incorporate side action core and, and so on. So how to print after you design your mold, you print it. Uh, we recommend using the rigid 10K resin, which is uh, one of our resin that is uh, highly um, glass filled material. It has a very high HDT of 218 degrees C. Uh, and it, so it makes it very um, thermally stable, but also very stiff. So it's um, our best material for injection molding. Um, as I mentioned before, you can post-treat the mold either by just grooming it with sanding, just with sandpaper to, um, to have a, a perfect um, flatness, or with sandblasting also help having a good surface finish. Uh, this is already a very matte aspect and very smooth surface finish, but there is always some more we can do. Um, and you can also use um, yeah you can also use some recommendation as printing the mold flat not using support on the molding surfaces this is very important so if you can avoid that that will really help having your best um, uh, best quality thank you for tuning into this webinar preview from formlabs to view the content in full please click on the link below alternatively if you'd like to get more information on our products and services then please visit our website